Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Untapped Podcast. My name is Jacob Gable. Hey, my name is Jacob Words, guys. Welcome to episode 123 of the Untapped Podcast. One, two, three right there. Pretty easy. <laughs> Pretty easy for us to remember. Bro, honestly, right? I love that. <laughs> I, I love how you point out things I never really notice until the, <laughs> we get to the episode itself. Details, you know? It's true. <laughs> guys, if this is your first time joining us for the Untapped Podcast, first of all, thank you. We are thrilled to have you here with us. We've actually got five main formats of our show. So first, we have Forging Fortitude episodes. Now, in these episodes, we cover the mental side of our brand. We go over our anecdotal experience with things like mindset and mentality. We then pass on tips and advice to you guys to then apply to your own lives. Next, and this is what we have today, we have physical vitality episodes. Now, in these episodes, we cover the physical side of our brand. So us two really get to showcase our expertise because you have two certified personal trainers here. Now, in these episodes, we cover everything to do with fitness, nutrition, diet, the gym, workouts, workout programs, and fitness programs like 75 Hard, supplements, untapped training, which is live. Make sure you uh, reach out to us if you have any questions or interest in that. And sometimes we will even take trending topics or articles within the fitness industry, and we will give our thoughts and opinions on those. A lot of free game in these physical vitality episodes, so make sure you guys pay close attention. Great first breakdown there, dude. Nice work. Third format, guys, is our breaking news format. That is a current event-based format. We go over current events and articles going on in the world. We might touch on some things, and we might talk about how drastic a situation might be, but we never doom and gloom. We bring solutions to these issues and how we as an individual can improve these type of things going on. So it's not all about the world's going to end. It's about actual real solutions at the ground level like we talked about last episode. Now, our fourth format is our Knight's Table format. The Knight's Table format is a masculinity-based format. That's when we talk about fatherhood, how important it is, what is toxic masculinity, is it really a thing, how important masculinity is. Now, keep in mind, I'm 25, Wurtz is 25, Mitch, when he's with us, is 23. So because of that reason, we are not coming to you as an all-put-together man at the top of the mountain. The only perfect man to ever walk the earth is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now, Anyways, on to our fifth format. The fifth format is our guest format. The guest format is where we sit down with an entrepreneur, fitness professional, athlete, doctor, somebody with a great story. You name it, we're going to talk to them. Now, a lot of times we do know these people, but we end up learning about 50 new things about them almost oh, yeah. every single guest episode. Absolutely. So because of that, you can guess you're also going to learn a lot about these people we bring on as well. Those are amazing. We'll have a couple of those coming up this summer that are going to be really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll announce those when those come around. But yeah, guys, that is our final thing to introduce. Usually I introduce my brother, but you know, he has family things going on right now. He is absent today. Yeah. Absent. <laughs> a lot of absences from Money mm -hmm. Mitch here yep. recently. We told him he used to ball his PTO. He didn't That's listen right. to us. That's right. <laughs> he ignored our advice. Crack down on him on that. <laughs> mm. Well, guys, we today, uh, I think we just hop right in, yeah? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Today, we kind of wanted to talk to you guys about probably one of our least favorite sentences that are said by coaches, sometimes by clients, um, and just by people in general. You mm -hmm. know, we hear it in the fitness space. I certainly hear it in the youth sports world. Um, and that sentence is, sentence is, they don't have what it takes. They don't have what it takes. Now... There's a lot of um, negative connotation to this to this particular phrase, um, and it's it's also disappointing when people say it because from a coach's perspective, and that's kind of the first thing we're going to hit on is from a coach's perspective, if you are the coach that is saying they don't have what it takes, well, first and foremost, I think you need to do a reality check of yourself. You know, if you find yourself saying that a lot about your clients, your players, you know, your you know, if you lead people at work or whatever, you know, if mm -hmm. you find yourself saying that a lot about those particular people, a reality check yourself might be needed, you know? Right. Because, well, why don't they have what it takes? You know, could it be on them? Certainly it could. Certainly. But your job as the coach, the trainer, the leader, the teacher, whatever, is to get the best out of those people that yeah. are, quote unquote, under you, you know, yep. or that are following you, you know? So... Are you doing your job effectively? You know, are you doing a good enough job? Do you have what it takes to be in your role? Mm -hmm. You know, and if you don't, then you need to step away. You know, that's one option. 
you need to try and be better and get better and learn new skills to then have what it takes. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to forge that. And, uh, you know, I also think you got to evaluate methods that you use. You know, are your methods effective? Do people respond to that? Do they hear it? Do they understand it? Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, in my experience with coaching, I'll start there, you know, on the youth side of, of baseball, um, there are plenty of times where you'll say something and you can just tell it is not resonating with that with that kid. You know, it just isn't. Um, so your role and your job in that situation is to then change how you how you give that information. Mm-hmm. You your know, delivery. You, exactly, yeah. your delivery. Yes, mm-hmm. it's a great way of saying that. So that kind of goes back to my previous point just a second ago, saying you might have to be better yourself. You know, you might have to learn that new skill, and that skill might be teaching, might be coaching. How can I be better for these people that I'm supposed to be making better? You know, and I think we've probably both experienced it as well on the fitness side of it too. Mm-hmm. You know, you've worked with mostly the adult population for the most part Mm -hmm. um, throughout your training career, whether that was at Orange Theory, Lifetime, currently at Personal Space, even with Health Source. You know, Mm -hmm. it's different, but it's the same. Different but similar, yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And so what would you – how would you approach that with adults? So with adults, um, it's a very individualistic thing. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. And you could probably say the same for kids. But with adults, a lot of the times – ones who are coming looking for training mm-hmm. and or some kind of health aspects like at, re- at rehab specialist at health source for example mm-hmm. if you're looking for the rehab and the health aspects of it getting rid of your back pain etc um anybody that's doing that already has part of the right mindset sure already yeah so hypothetically you don't really have to turn into the next drill sergeant you, yeah, don't, have to, right. you don't have to turn into the next marine corps leader or something like right. that marine corps that's probably a different story because like a lot of those men you know, they might come in broken. Oh, yeah. You know? I'm sure a lot of them do. I, I'm sure. They're and looking for guidance. A hundred percent. And, you know, and to a degree, the adults are looking for gui- guidance as well. Oh, maybe, sure. Maybe that's the one thing they haven't succeeded in is their fitness. Yeah. You know, which is, uh, it's that's tough because mm-hmm. maybe you are really good at business. Maybe you're really good as a husband, father, and a family. But then you just, like that last little nugget is your fitness and your right. health. Mm-hmm. And you really haven't just addressed that yet. You're like, I need help. Mm-hmm. Cool. So if they already have that mindset, as a coach, you should already realize that. Yeah. And then be like, okay, I have something to work with here, right. no matter what. Right, right, right. Because a lot of times, another one, none of the phrase that goes along with the same thing we're talking about here is, you know, they're just here for social hour. Yeah. I heard that all the time. Mm-hmm. Yet anytime you get to work with that client, let's say you're covering for another trainer or something like that, anytime you get to work with that same client, they're ready to work. Yeah. They're putting it down mm-hmm. instantly. Let's say you're only seeing them at one time a week or whatnot you change your language just a little bit to speak positively about their situation, mm-hmm. all of a sudden things change. Yeah. Now, does that mean that I'm the happy go lucky all the time? No, absolutely right. not. One on one. Because it's not social yeah. hour. It's not. It's it's work, no matter right. what. Do I have a great relationship with each one of my clients and I do I do my best to make get better and better at that as I age as a trainer? Absolutely sure. I do. So I know I've gotten better socially with my clients on taking the minute and a half rest time, okay, chatting about it. Hey, we're right back to our work. Cool. Mm-hmm. I'm already tracked. That's the nice thing about this watch. Is it tracks time that way yeah. for me. So I can just be like, oh, game time. Right. And we're right back to it. Pick up our conversation, the rest time if we need to, mm-hmm. or if we're doing a superset, that changes things too. Sure. So it's all really, it's all really how you think about things. Cause if yeah. you're, if you're telling yourself this client's going to come in, I hate them. They, you know, they're miserable to work with. It's going to suck. Yeah. You're, right. you're, you're kind of going to put yourself in the situation right. that it's going to be bad. Right. Now, again, very small percentages of the time. I, I will say this. There's, there was probably less than 5% of the times I saw this happen with other trainers and maybe a couple times with myself where somebody really came in and it was it just wasn't the right fit. Yeah. It's like that's the time where you look for another trainer for them that their personality might match with them, mm-hmm. which is a real thing. Yeah. Personal space is great about that. We They try to personality match with trainers really mm-hmm. well, which is a big thing for them. Absolutely. Which is very important because if you don't mesh with the person, you're not going to get them results. No, it's just not very, at all. very true. Not at all. It's the same thing as like somebody might respond to Jeff's type of training compared to ours mm-hmm. or Brock's type of training compared to ours. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And again, our, our, our philosophy is that much different. No. Right. But the point is they might mesh better with those two. Sure. Or vice versa. Mm-hmm. They might mesh better with us than that. Yeah. Who knows? Right. So 
it really comes down to evaluating their mindset. Mm -hmm. Usually I use the first two to three sessions for this. It doesn't take long. No. First two to three sessions and the first two to three times they're in hell source, same thing. Right. It's very easy to tell how into it they are mm -hmm. and how willing to listen they are to this type of stuff. Absolutely. And I will say this too, probably 85 to 90% of people that I've worked with in some capacity are coachable. Yeah. Like they will, again, it might take three more cues for this person compared to two more cues sure. for a former athlete or whatnot. Yeah, sure. sure. No doubt. But again, that's just you working around it. It's the same thing as like you said, I'm glad you brought up as a business leader, you know, or you have employees under you or you're a coach for athletes as well. Um, you're coaching a baseball team like you. That's, that's genuinely something that you have to do. You have to evaluate those type of things as a coach. Mm -hmm. if, because if you go in and try to treat everybody the same way, humans are very individuals. Like yeah. they're, they're individuals. That's, that's how we are. Mm -hmm. We have our different personality traits. We have our different quirks and whatnot, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. We have our stuff we respond better to. All it is is just evaluating that stuff mm -hmm. and using that. And by the way, it continue to be positive. Again, if it's continue to be a negative situation, that's very unlikely. It does happen though. Right. So that's when you can be like, Hey, I, I want to move on from this client. I want them to go with somebody else or, you know, this employee is just not doing the job. Maybe they go to another department right. or maybe they're not a fit for the company. Yeah. That type of stuff. Yeah. I've seen that too. Right. So I, I don't think it's a, a lot of times you hear trainers catastrophize it mm -hmm. on our end of things Our people in our positions, they catastrophize scenarios with clients, with their athletes and whatnot. And then those are the ones that are not getting results for their clients either. Right. And it's like, you can't think about it that way. Right. You have to think about it in like everybody's got a chance to make this thing happen. Yeah. Which they do. Right. Everybody does, as we've talked about before. 100%. Everybody has a chance to be healthy. Everybody has a chance to be a successful employee, et cetera, mm -hmm. or a successful entrepreneur. To have what it takes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's what it really comes down to. Absolutely. And, and I think you hit on an important point there, too, is how are you talking to these these clients, to these players, to these, you know, whatever? Because – you have to be able to check the language that you're using with them, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's got to be positive the majority of the time. Now, there are times where you might have to get in someone's ass about something. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it also doesn't, even in that type of a situation, and this is something that I've had to learn as well, as a coach, as a baseball coach, it's like if a kid does something wrong or a player, because I've coached high school as well, if a player does something wrong, one, you can't jump everyone. Not everyone's going to respond to that. There are certain kids and certain people that will respond to that, mm -hmm. you know, but it's the way you approach that situation. If it's all negative, 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 you suck, you suck, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, guess what they're not going to do? One, they're not going to hear you. They're going to get upset. You know, they're going to get emotional about that because a lot of these guys are kids and sometimes they're very overly emotional. Nah, that comes with you it. You know? Yeah. Um, sure, sure. Now, granted, with my direct team, like I'm dealing with 13 and 14-year-olds. So there's a lot going on in their lives at 13 and 14. Like <laughs> yeah. puberty is really starting to hit. Hormones yep. are starting to hit. Like there's a lot going on, you know. So I try to keep that in the forefront of my mind as much as possible. Um, and I and I hope in the future I'm able to take lessons that I learn now to when I'm hopefully a father one day when I've got a kid that's going in into puberty, going into that stage of life, that maybe I've got some experience and some um, compassion. Yeah. Some With wherewithal that. about their yeah, scenario. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and um, in that stage of their life, you know. But keeping things positive will almost always get you the results that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, even if someone has done something wrong, if you can come at it with a positive point of view, and that's hard to do at times, very hard to do at times, actually. But if you can come at it in that, from that direction, more often than not, you're going to get the result you're looking for. You know, and that's that's where it takes you looking at yourself as the coach, the leader, whatever, everything else we've named, being able to do that because someone might have pissed you off. You know, you might be angry about something. You might be frustrated with something. So it would be very easy to just jump them, get in their ass and, and tell them how bad they are. <laughs> yeah. You know, but what's that going to do for, for them, for you, for the team? What is that going to do? Nothing. It's not going to do anything positive, you know? Agreed. And with the way society is nowadays, like that person might just up and leave. And that's where the team aspect comes in. It's like, okay, well, am I screwing over my team? I might be, you know? Absolutely. Um, and again, I, th I think it's important to, to assist those people in developing thick skin as well, especially sure. young kids. Yeah. It's important to develop thick skin 
that does not mean you're the asshole coach. No, that, that's not what it means at no, all. No, and and again, there there are some coaches, for example, in NHL history who were known just apparently like just dickheads. Yeah, but they won Stanley Cup after Stanley Cup. Right. So it really, in that scenario, if you think about it, it comes down to, I mean, do you do you inspire your players? That's what I was going to say you know? too. Like, if you are that type. Do you still have that passion and that drive and that competitiveness that you're also portraying to the people that are looking up to you? Because if you are, then you're fine. You're fine. You know, because the players, you know, in a sports aspect, the players know what they're buying into. You know, they know that they're going to be pushed. They know that they're going to have high expectations. And if they are willing mm -hmm. to buy into those things, then that's how you win championship after championship after championship, you know? Clearly, the Chiefs are doing something right on the field as far as that goes with Andy Reid. Other than off, off the field? Off the field. As we were talking about before. We were, yeah, off the field, I don't know what is going on with the Kansas City Chiefs right now. <laughs> I mean, my God. Patrick, you need to get your boys in line. Andy, you need to get your boys in line as far as that goes. But on the field, clearly, there's something working. There's something clicking. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and I've never heard that Andy Reid is is that type of coach that you mm -hmm. were just naming. You know, just an, Apparently, players love to just play a for him. jerk. Yeah. You know, but... But that's the point. They love to play for him. So whatever it is that he does, those guys buy into, and they're like, all right, let's go. You know? Like, yeah. let's do it. Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, same way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which Belichick was known as kind of like, they they people think of him as just like a very dry, sure, you know, non-emotional guy mm -hmm. and whatnot. But obviously he, developed, he yeah. developed some method that these guys really attached to it. Nick Saban. Nick Saban's another, another one oh, right there. Oh, man. I mean, I mean you've seen him God. rip guys in practice. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the thing is like there is different levels to this as well where, you know, if you're a young athlete and whatnot, it, you're more than likely going to need the tougher skin yes. if you want to go to that next level. Absolutely. And that goes for anybody that's trying to climb the corporate ladder up to the CEO sure. position or whatever, CFO, all that stuff. Or if you're trying to become the best trainer possible and right. whatnot, you're probably going to have to get pretty thick skin. That's, that's true, 100%. Yeah. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that, you know, as the leader that – you have to be brash and basically just roast people yeah, and whatnot. Right. And that's your essentially your only job. Right. It's like there is an inspiration aspect to it as well, mm -hmm. which again, I mean, a good example of this, me one-on-one -on -one with a client is that what works for me is that, like, let's say I'm evaluating somebody's squat and mm -hmm. whatnot. They go down and, you know, I notice three good things, one bad thing. Mm -hmm. I don't point out the bad thing right away. No, no. I, I go, hey, your torso angle looks great as you come down the squat. Mm -hmm. Your chest at the right angle. Your depth. You know, you your know, depth whatever. looks great. Yeah. Your hips look great. But last thing we need to work on is just those knees getting out. No big deal. Right. No big deal. Right. Just a little bit. And then, boom, next Easy set. Fix. Good. And yeah. then they're squatting 900 pounds. Yeah, in their exactly. First session within, with you. yeah, they're squatting more than Brock <laughs> within two sessions. Yeah. It's it's my secret training formula. Yeah, right. right. Definitely not steroids. We we do <laughs> implement it into untapped training. <laughs> you are you do have to take performance enhancing drugs <laughs> to be an untapped client. <laughs> oh man, man, we we're gonna get a lawsuit for that yeah, one. Yeah, right? we might, we <laughs> might. So real quick here now, let's transition to a client's point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's. It kind of starts with the exact same thing we actually said from a coach's perspective mm -hmm. is reality checking yourself. You know, if you are going from coach to coach to coach, trainer to trainer to trainer, team to team to team, is there really something wrong with all of those places that you've left? Mm -hmm. You know, is there? Okay, maybe one of them. Sure, it could. Maybe maybe there is something wrong with all of them. Yeah. Who knows? But is there actually? Percentage-wise, it, exactly. it's probably not likely. Is that the yeah. most likely scenario? Yeah. No. Okay. And that's a reality. That's where a reality check of yourself is very much needed. You know, okay. Why, why do I not click with all these people? Like what is going on here? Oh, well maybe it's me. Maybe I don't bring energy to my sessions. You know, maybe I don't bring enthusiasm. Maybe I don't do what I'm supposed to do when I'm not with my mm -hmm. coach, you know? So maybe I need to change those things. And then this next coach I'm about to try, it'll be a great fit. You know, we'll get results. I'll, I'll start to look how I want to look. I'll start to feel how I want to feel. All these other things in my life are going to start going in the positive direction. Mm -hmm. Might be time for a reality check of yourself. Yeah. You, you, know? you have to give them an opportunity to mold you. Yeah, 100%. You, you, yeah. And you have to be willing to let them mold you. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's kind of the same thing there, I guess. But Well, it's the same thing as when we've sat down with, for example, Jeff. We, we had a meeting with him, what, one, two years ago mm -hmm. now, give or take, where we – 
he went over business stuff with us mm -hmm. and what he recommended in his experience. If we would have came in with an ego oh, and thought yeah. we would have known everything, we wouldn't have learned anything. Exactly. From him. Exactly. You know, yes. instead we actually sat down with him and let him basically just dump information on us. Yeah. So we could be molded and absorb that as best as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's the same thing as, you know, we had somebody like Will Bates on the podcast and whatnot, or even like Trent, yeah. You know, somebody like him, it's like we we kind of sit there and just pay attention as he talks about yeah. psychology and the mind and whatnot. And I'm just like this. I'm, you know, yeah. like we're very focused on what he's talking about yes. because then you can be molded yeah. to a certain degree to what you want to be molded to. Yeah. You know, if you, if you do want to win, you do have to give your coach, give your um, manager mm -hmm. the opportunity to let you win. Yes. You know? Yes. And again, that comes along with being a good entrepreneur, a good teammate, all that stuff, a good client, because if you're, if you're able to be molded to the team's winning strategy, mm -hmm. it, it's probably going to be pretty successful. Yes. More than likely at minimum for you. Absolutely. Hypothetically for your team, if you're on the like right teams we're talking about here, because mm -hmm. again, if you're going through five organizations or whatnot, business, athlete, whatever, five trainers, not all of them had something wrong with them. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You, you could have won with at least one of them. Right. And do you want to know why you're not getting results? Mm. It's because you keep switching every time you think something's going wrong. Right. You might just be in a harder stage of the of the process. Yeah. You might you be know? two months in and you're just giving up. It's like, yeah. well, uh, it's longer than that. Right. No I matter I what I was going to have a six pack, you know, and I'm 100 pounds overweight. It's like, okay, come on, buddy. It's like, well, but also at the same time, it's like, wait. You've gained five pounds of muscle. Right. That's a huge deal. Right. And you're down 23 pounds of that 100 you need to lose. Exactly. It's like, that's a positive. That's, that, that, I would consider that a win. Yes. You know? A hundred percent. You know? Instead of looking at it, it's like, oh, well, I, don't, I didn't lose the 100 in these two months. Well, one, that's unrealistic. And whoever told you that is realistic is lying to you. Mm -hmm. Okay? And number two, like, that's where we're talking. Look at things in a positive way. Now, still, this is still on the client side of things. You know, looking at those things as a positive way. It's like, okay, I've lost 23 pounds in two months. That's a lot. That's a lot in 60 days. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking over 10 pounds a month as far as that goes in, in this yeah. particular example, which for someone that's over 100 pounds or 100 pounds overweight, that could happen. There's Absolutely. a very good chance Especially of that. Especially that first two or three months. Exactly. Especially. Exactly. That first two or three months, yeah. You know, and, and also still staying on the client point of view here, like, if you're looking for a coach, a trainer, a leader to give you the motivation to want to do a good job, like you have to realize you already have that motivation if you're looking to get a coach in any sense. You already have that. You're looking for it, so you clearly want to make a change. You want to make a change. What do they call that in the NASM stages of change? What's that first one? Uh, oh, you're talking about uh, pre-contemplation, yeah, pre -con contemplation. contemplation, contemplation, and then there's like the beginning. Like basically, it's like the activation like stage action of it. or something. Action, yeah, I don't yeah. remember exactly how they because then it. then maintenance comes a little bit after Correct. that too, Correct. and all that. Yeah, but you're already in that stage where it's like, okay, I have realized this in my life. Whether I'm overweight, I have too much fat, I want more muscle, whatever. I need to make a change. Boom, there you go. You have your motivation already. You're, you found you're already winning. Yes, you found it on your own. By so addressing you, that, you were already winning. Yes, yes. And now you're going out, you're looking for help from a coach. You have it. You have it. So you don't need to be going to coaches looking to give you the motivation. They're just, they're not, that's not their, it's already not there. their role. You already have it. Yeah. Yes. You know what the drill is. They're going to yeah. give you the plan to then become disciplined. That's the one that you can look for coaches to forge that skill in you, you know? Yeah. That's what you can look for. But as far as the motivation piece, like, you already got it. Mm -hmm. You already got it. Yep. That The coach, the proper coach, will inspire you. They will develop discipline in you. And then, therefore, you will get results. Mm -hmm. You will get those results yep. you're looking for. And, again, that if, – if so if you already have – that beginning motivation or that beginning recognition of something that is that needs work. Mm -hmm. if, so you already have that. Go back to the evaluation aspect of who you're getting coached by. You know, is he addressing things? Is he, depending on my package that I'm working with the coach with or something like that, mm -hmm. is he giving me what that package demands right. and whatnot? Um, is the coach, you know, giving me what I need to do to succeed? Mm -hmm. Is is he addressing things with my swing, right. with my slap shot or whatever, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, or my movements in the gym? Is yeah. he addressing things like this? 
So that can be a self-evaluation period, 100%. Absolutely. But more than likely, if you pick the right organization, like the right team mm -hmm. um, that has an overarching, like Clutch has, I don't know how many how many teams does it have, like just a million, uh, all the ages up. I think as a facility between our high school program and our youth program, we have like 25 mm -hmm. or something, yep. give or take. And they already have a history of oh, winning, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So, And then the thing is, like that same thing if you're doing an online coach, then you look at their results mm -hmm. on their pages. Like, do have they gotten results for themselves? Right. Have they also, do they post about clients and whatnot? Right. That's also a recognition. Have they had, you know, however much experience and whatnot? Mm -hmm. Do they have the fervor that you need to work with that matches really well with you? Right. So again, a lot of the people looking for trainers, they don't even want to think about it. Right. They want to be just given something. Okay, good. I'm good from there, mm -hmm. which is great. You know, that's awesome. Yes. Again, it gives us a job for sure. Um, and for them, it then makes their life easier because they don't have to think about the fitness aspect of right. it, which is great. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the the overarching thing there for both client and coach is a certain self-awareness about your situation mm -hmm. and where you're at. Yep. You know, are you taking care of your duties as a coach? Are you taking care of your duties as a client? Mm -hmm. Are you putting yourself in the right scenario as a client to succeed with a coach? Like we said, as a coach, are you giving every single client, every single athlete, every single employee, the best possible chance to win in your scenario? Are and you covering all your bases, which in the leadership position with the coach, mm -hmm. manager, you know, again, coach for a team, you're going to hold most of the, the brunt of the responsibility there. Yeah. It, yeah. That's the case. Yeah. No doubt if you're in a leadership position, that holds most of it. Yeah. And that is mostly on you to see that person succeed. 100%. 100%. And again, most clients, like we're saying in this scenario, most athletes, most employees do want to succeed. That's just true. Yeah. Most people do want to succeed. I mean, that's, it, you know, we like to act like the world's gone to hell, which in a lot of ways are bad things about in the world going on. Sure. Mm -hmm. But there are still good people out there that still want to work at a high percentage. Right. That's just true. Right. There's no doubt. Again, we see it all the time in right. the fitness industry. Most people in the fitness industry want to win, want to work, want to see others succeed. Mm -hmm. It's just... So if you're already looking for that and you're already evaluating, you're listening to this episode, you're evaluating that stuff, you're already on the right path. Yes. You're already co coming down the right direction there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm. Man, look what happens when we stay on topic, dude. It's weird. It is weird. I almost hate staying. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> we didn't even mention JT's age in this episode either. <laughs> oh, well, there it is. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, at the end of all of our non- guest episodes money mitch will typically ask us a q a question that is submitted by you guys the viewers or the listeners um that won't ha happen today money mitch isn't with us um no big deal but we do want you guys to continue submitting those questions to us we have a few different ways that we would like you to do that first and foremost you can dm them to us on instagram at untapped.llp you can also dm them to us individually uh, you can text them to us individually as well if you have our number you can email them to us. Our email is extrications at gmail.com. Now, I know that's uh, some word soup right there. So there is an email <laughs> button in our Instagram bio and I believe on our Facebook bio. Um, you can leave your questions in the comments of our Instagram posts. So each week we typically post two, three to like five at most uh, clips from the podcast, just different highlights that we pick out um, and feel you guys would enjoy. So you can leave them in the comments there. You can leave them in the comments on our YouTube videos. So all of these podcast episodes are on YouTube, along with some vlogs that we have done. Um, we will, we will, we will get back to those. Um, once once my baseball season is over, my schedule opens up a whole lot more, especially on the Which weekends. Very soon. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're we're flying through our seasons. Yeah. Crazy. Um, but there's vlogs on there. We also have our first YouTube exclusive podcast type episode. Um, so definitely go check that as well. Check that out as well. But you can leave them in the comments out of any of those. We give all of the questions to Money Mitch. Um, he will pick one out that pertains to the episode. Sometimes he will just come up with a question himself because, as we have said repeatedly, he is the smartest guy in the room. When in the room. <laughs> chirp, chirp. <laughs> um, and then sometimes we will just have some funny questions as well that we get submitted. Um, we had one in the past was, how many five-year-olds? Could we take on in a 10-minute span, I think it was? I think it was 10-minute yeah. time span, yeah. Just a wild question to yeah. answer. Um, <laughs> so my point is, guys, the questions can be about anything. We would love if they would have something to do with one of our five 
formats of the show. But if you got something funny you want to ask us, more, more than likely we will uh, get to it eventually. So keep submitting those questions. Keep up the love and support, guys. The, the shares have been awesome here recently on Instagram and on stories and things like that. So please keep that up. Um, text it to your friends and family. Talk about it. Tell them about us. The more and more that you guys share the show, the more we can get to new viewers and new listeners, bring on great guests, um, in addition to all the wonderful ones we have had on. Yeah. And what you got? So I was going to say, too, those of you that are audio listeners, go run up that YouTube, too. Definitely. You don't have to view the whole thing, but go on there, like, comment. That also helps Subscribe. us. Subscribe. Because those audio listeners, you guys are loyal. Oh, yeah. You know, that's where we built it out originally. But mm -hmm. YouTube's a big deal as well for yeah. us to reach people. So, so and, and the funny, or the fun thing about YouTube as well, like you, especially in our off topic moments throughout most episodes, like you get to see our reactions, you mm -hmm. get to see us laughing and stuff. Like we're funny guys, you know, like it's, it's fun to, to have you guys a part of that aspect of the podcast as well. Whether you do listen or you watch or you do both. Um, we always appreciate the love and support. Always, 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 guys. So keep that up. Anyway, until next time, peace and love. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.